Tim Keller, thanks for coming on. Great to be here. Well, let's start with the number one issue with voters in most polls, and that's crime in the city. Uh, we know that you want to hire more police officers, as does your opponent, but let's talk about how you would reduce crime other than that. Uh, we're number one in car thefts. We're very high in violent crime in the nation. And our violent crime is up 32% from past years. So what's your best and first idea for how to reduce crime? Well, fundamentally, uh, we've got to get back to community policing. And that's a word that's thrown out a lot. And uh, I think it's important that folks understand that's not a buzzword. That is a series of policies and procedures and an entire way of managing an apartment differently. And I got to see this when I was the state senator in the International District. We had the lowest crime rates in decades there because we actually problem solve together. And that's what it's about. It's about restoring trust so that officers are talking with community members on a weekly basis in their neighborhood. And those officers are the same. They don't rotate out. They're there for three, four, or five years. And over time, they problem solve in their community on foot and on bike. That's what we've got to get back to. So it's sort of a modern version of that beat cop idea. Uh, but to do that, you do need a lot more officers. And so that's the connection. It's not just that more officers uh, are needed conceptually. It's that if we're going to get back to community policing, we're going to need them. And that's how we can actually uh, restore trust and I think eventually compartmentalize crime so that then we can reduce it. Right now, it's just citywide and there's really no control or accountability on a neighborhood basis for policing. Well, speaking of needing more police, uh, you have a new ad out. Uh, the campaign has tilted, I think, a bit more negative since the runoff started. Uh, there's been negative uh, certainly against you, and your new ad kind of, to me, maybe tilts a bit in that way uh, because it talks about how you want to hire more police officers. Your opponent says he does too. Mm -hmm. But in your ad, you highlight a pass vote he made against hiring more police officers or funding more police. Right. And you don't mention, of course, that he uh, is now saying he wants to hire more. I is that really fair? Well, I think it is because uh, what I'm running on is my record, and I'm happy to defend all the good, bad, and ugly in my own record. And I believe it's always fair game to uh, take on your opponent's record as well. And the fact is, you know, my opponent has been a city councilor for eight years and was president of council many times when they cut the police department. And so uh, that's what I'm highlighting. I think that's very different than the negative character type ads that they're doing, you know, which really question a person's integrity and things like that. And, and that's why you won't see that coming from me. But in terms of debating our record, absolutely. And uh, he's got a record of actually cutting the police department and now he's running on trying to increase it and so I do think there's a real disconnect there. Well speaking of attacking you, uh, you're being attacked not by him specifically but by an out-of-state developer uh, calling you soft on crime and so forth and this guy has nothing to do with crime. He is a developer that is supporting Santa Lena which is a 21 square mile proposed development uh, southwest of I-40. And it's going to take a lot of water, and it's going to take a lot of other resources from the city, taxpayer subsidies being one. Now, the word is that he is funding these ads against you, calling you soft on crime for a pass vote in the legislature because he wants that Santa Lena. You would sit on the uh, Albuquerque, Bernalillo County Water Authority, and you'd have to pass on the use of the water. Mm -hmm. Folks that don't want Santa Lena say, look, Albuquerque needs a lot of infill. It needs resources that inside the city we already have, and we cannot do all of it. Uh, where do you come down on Santa Lena? Your opponent is in favor of it. Mm -hmm. Well, and it is true, I have a track record uh, voting against the previous versions of Santa Lena in the legislature. And I think for me, you know, this is really unfortunate because we've got an Arizona developer who is, you know, uh, playing heavily in the mayor's race. 
Uh, really, because when we met, I straight up said that's probably not in the best interest in, of Albuquerque as a city to subsidize your water needs or your development. And just based on that, uh, we see these ads about crime and sex offenders that, I mean, they, have, they don't even have anything to do with our discussion. Or Santa Lena. Right. And that's why I think it's so disingenuous, and it really is designed to divide our city. And I, I do think this is where any developer, sure, we'll disagree here and there, but let's disagree on development. Let's not try and divide our city with fear. Uh, and I think that's what they're trying to do. And so I very much think it's wrong. And uh, even just as a, a dad with a, a four-year-old daughter, uh, it's disgusting what they're putting out there. And um, for me too, look, developers can do whatever they want on their land, more or less. It's a different question on whether or not Albuquerque taxpayers should subsidize them. That's a whole different question, and that's really where it breaks down. I'm concerned about the water. I'm not sure we should be subsidizing water that actually is even out of city limits. And so I've got a number of concerns, and clearly that's why these ads are coming my way. Okay, let's move to some more recent news. You have an ethics, well, actually, you have three ethics complaints. <laughs> There's actually four you. now. <laughs> oh, they they keep four? coming, okay. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Two, at least two, filed by Wayne Johnson, who is a former opponent in the mayoral race that did not make it into the runoff. Uh, but the one complaint was dismissed uh, very recently uh, because, it, but it, just because it went to the wrong department. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be refiled. The issue, for those uh, who don't know, is that you are a publicly financed candidate and you are prohibited from coordinating with a PAC, and the complaint says you did it anyway. Uh, okay, now there are four complaints. That's a fair amount of smoke. Is there any fire there? You know, I don't believe so, and I know we have not coordinated in any way with the PAC, and I wish there weren't any PACs. You know, this is a function of Citizens United, and the irony is that uh, what you mentioned about the, the land developer from Arizona is also through a PAC. I mean, so there are dozens of PACs playing in this race on both sides. And uh, I know we have not coordinated in any way, so we're not worried about that at all. Uh, I also know we've been very transparent about our uh, accounting for public financing since February. All of these things came up right before the first election. And they all came up, uh, they're all being perpetrated by literal Republican Party officials. So they're very partisan in nature and they're designed to distract and to uh, discredit uh, the public financing system. And the public financing system has a lot of challenges and I know firsthand, I mean, I think I'm uniquely qualified to actually say that. Uh, but I'm committed to it and I made a choice to do things differently. And uh, that choice we have followed uh, every uh, rule and procedure based on what we were told when we decided to do that. And I'm grateful that 6,000 folks in Albuquerque way back in March gave us $5 a piece to enable us to do that. It's a hard choice, it's hard to get it. And uh, so I stand by that choice as a choice I can control. And I think uh, the real reason why this is all happening, I mean, folks are worried for the first time they're not gonna have uh, well-connected uh, friends in City Hall. And uh, that's why this is all coming. Okay, well, I wanna talk about City Hall and what's happening there. Uh, recently, there was a city uh, ordinance requiring employers to allow their employees in Albuquerque to accrue sick leave at the rate of one hour per 30 hours worked. It was very narrowly defeated last month in the election. Um, you will have sick leave if you're elected mayor. Presumably you have it as state auditor. Uh, I know you've expressed some uh, reservations about the ordinance that came up for a vote in terms of its length and, and uh, complication. But would you support any kind of sick leave ordinance for workers who work in Albuquerque? You know, I would. I, I think sick leave is important to have in a city to stand up for uh, all of our workforce and to keep a healthy workforce and a productive workforce. And so at the end of the day, we have a situation where if you're, you know, for example, I mean, we have, I have two young children who are in daycare and my wife and I both work. So when anyone gets sick, one of us has to stay home and so forth, and, and we can kind of manage through that. But what about folks who are single moms, single parents, 
Uh, this is a gateway to poverty because what happens is they get fired and then all of a sudden they have no job and they have two kids that they have to take care of. So I do believe the city should really step up and protect folks because we need a healthy workforce and we want to do everything we can to stop that cycle of poverty. But that said, uh, we got to be reasonable about it and I think this really is a function of a lack of leadership uh, from Mayor Barry and um, you know even from my opponent on council. They had three years to come up with a compromise bill and all the way up until about September, they could have even put something else on the ballot for us to choose from. And they were afraid. They would not step out and say, this is important, but let's find something that will work for the business community and small businesses, and that's really a bad actor bill. So if you've got a good sick leave policy, great. This is for the folks who don't. That is where I think we got to come back to. And I think that's what, uh, one, I will do as mayor, and I think that's what we need in our city. To me, that's a reflection of the kind of leadership that we have not had and that we need to have going forward. Would you exempt any businesses, small business, and if so, where would you draw the line? You know, I would want to work on that with uh, the business community and the advocates because I think there's some, and you've got to look at like temporary workers, and then you have to look at contracted workers, and then you've got to look at are we talking about a five person business or a 20 person business? And having been in the legislature and put together minimum wage increases that were palatable to the business community, that's where the real rub is. And so you've got to see where both sides are and come up with something that people can live with. Okay, let's move on to a very hot topic nationally and in this state, and that's immigration. Uh, if Albuquerque should become a sanctuary city, uh, we could have a lot of conflict in the city for one thing and lose some federal funding uh, for another. So the Justice Department wants municipal police to take on some of the work of the federal government and enforce federal laws. Uh, first of all, how do you define a sanctuary city? And how do you feel about having Albuquerque police enforce federal law when we have so much crime here in the city? Well, I believe we need to protect all families in Albuquerque, uh, regardless of their status. I think that's part of the mayor's job and that's part of uh, public safety's job. So for me, a couple of things on this. Uh, number one is that definition is currently being defined in court. And we see lots of cities, Seattle, Chicago, all suing over what this means. And so I think the good news is we're gonna find out and we'll be able to understand. But I believe in uh, the connection between um, protecting our immigrant families uh, and helping public safety. And the amazing thing is they actually go together. So when I was the senator in the International District, there's a huge population of undocumented folks there and refugees. And one of the reasons why we got crime down so low is because we worked with them. They were critical to actually highlighting uh, what the real gang activity was and who was involved in that and uh, the associated drug activity. We need folks to come together to help us reduce crime. And that means also undocumented folks. And that means that we, they have to trust our police department and they will never trust our police department if they're afraid of getting deported. So that's why I don't think APD should be doing ICE's job. They've got a job to do, we've got a job to do. I want every resource we've got focused on making our city safer, and that means not doing ICE's job for them. Well, the U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions has threatened uh, to withdraw funding from other law enforcement areas uh, from cities that do not agree to enforce ICE uh, regulations with local police. So far it hasn't happened. It has been threatened once, but they didn't actually do it. If they should withdraw other federal funding uh, because of the city's uh, policy of not enforcing ICE rules, uh, would you join a lawsuit with other mayors, if you were mayor, to prevent them from pulling that funding? I would. I would. I believe we've got to stand up for who we are as a city, which is a diverse community uh, with folks from all walks of life and all levels of documentation. And uh, that is core to our historical narrative. And so I think we should be out there uh, standing up for that in court if we need to. And, you know, I also think that right now what is being threatened literally is like 
$100,000 or so for lapel cameras. So I think people need to also understand if we're talking about, you know, all federal funding, that is a an issue that a mayor's got to take seriously and we've got to be realistic about. That has never been the case. That is the rhetoric, but the actual content are these small grants for equipment. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to be bullied around by DC uh, for the price of $100,000 for small equipment. That is, that is not worth redefining our city. So I want to stand up for who we are. And uh, unless there is, uh, you know, something that really has to do with uh, meaningful policies and funding, uh, I think it's a relatively straightforward and easy choice. Let's move to another issue very high on the voters list. As you know, New Mexico is number one in unemployment. Uh, Albuquerque's a little bit better, uh, but we're not as good as Santa Fe, and Santa Fe actually has a higher minimum wage than Albuquerque has. But unemployment is a big problem in the city, and what would you do to tackle that one? You know, I think there's a couple of things. We've got to work on our workforce and get our workforce in a better place uh, so that they can be employed. And so uh, I have a lot of material on that uh, on our website and so forth about workforce training. But I think more specifically, it's actually in some ways connected to the uh, Santalina project in the following way. For decades, our city has focused our efforts on trying to lure companies here to hire us. And it, uh, we got Intel, but then since then, every few years, there's something else. There's Tesla, now it's Amazon. And it's just this attitude that can't, can't someone move here and solve all our problems for employment? That's really been our economic development strategy. Now, we give a lot of lip service to entrepreneurship. I think we've done some good things, especially Innovate ABQ, I think is actually a good thing. Uh, but it's a, it's a building with a lot of branding uh, and some targeted you know, uh, activities inside there. But I mention that because I think we really need to refocus what we're doing. All of those tools we use to try and lure companies here, I want to refocus on companies that are growing already in Albuquerque. We think about directed energy companies and uh, microelectronic companies. And I've got long lists of companies who are 20 people, $5 million, they want to double in size. Phoenix will give them $10 million in economic development incentives. Their own town, Albuquerque, will give them nothing. Those are the companies we should be investing in. That's where we should be focusing. We'll let other, like the state and AED, they can work on trying to recruit companies here, but the city of Albuquerque economic development, we should be focused on making our best companies grow and staying and keeping our kids from leaving and giving us career paths, not just entry level jobs. One final quick topic, speaking of economics and moving to the bottom of the scale. Uh, there's an ordinance right now before the city council to put some more requirements on pawn shops because we do have a huge theft problem in the city and fencing uh, stolen goods is mm -hmm. a big problem. <clears throat> but pawn shops are all also thought of as a poor person's bank. The people that patronize pawn shops don't have a bank account, they don't have credit cards, they need money for gas or as one editorial in, in the paper said recently, diapers, uh, for their babies, and mm. you have said you're for this ordinance, which would require that they wait three days instead of instant loans. They would wait three days and send money in the mail. And for somebody that needs gas to get to work, that ain't gonna cut it. Yeah. So how do you answer that criticism? To me, this is a good example of where you need leadership from the top to put something together that accomplishes both. It's very similar to the sick leave situation. Where is the mayor in this debate? Uh, where are city councilors, at least, I know there's a group proposing it and there's a group against it, but where is the bill that actually does both? And this what is... What would you do? So what I would do is, I do think we need to work on this because crime has a supply and a demand side. And when you're looking at the demand side, you've got to look at the business side. And I dealt with this in copper. So in copper theft, this is legislation that I worked on, exact same issue, right? Businesses made the same argument. These are metal recyclers. Uh, and then the government, because of theft, is the exact same thing. And it took us two years. But eventually we agreed on certain ways of reporting 
uh, to make sure that uh, folks couldn't just anonymously sell something and get cash. But then we also made it reasonable so that we weren't impacting in your situation uh, folks you know, who need money for diapers and things like that. So a lot of it has to do with reporting and transparency on the source of the purchase. And so if I'm selling my heirloom jewelry to get diapers, I can document that and prove that. If I can't, maybe it should wait three days. So I think this is where, look, I mean, I don't want to get too policy on folks, but uh, that's what matters. And I've got a lot of experience in that. So I think I could actually bring folks together on this and uh, have it as a way to reduce crime, but also make sure and protect pawn shops and businesses legitimately doing things in Albuquerque. Okay, well, our time is almost out very quickly. Where do you see the city if you're elected six months from election day and where do you see it four years from election day? You know, six months from election day, I hope our city has renewed hope. And we also have a bit of a blueprint on who we're going to be going forward. And that's in large part why I'm running for mayor. Four years down the road, I want folks to have renewed pride in our city and to believe that this is a great place to leave in every way, or to live in every way, <laughs> and that it's not a place people want to leave. Um, those kinds of measures, there's different statistics you can use for that, but I also feel like it's an attitude and it's a feeling in our city, and we don't have that right now. And so I, I want folks to actually want to move here. I want folks to say, yeah, I'm staying because this place is actually a great place to live. Tim Keller, candidate for mayor, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you.